Let's start with an example. Let's say for a week, you wanted to start making and selling your own mugs. Not this kind of mug, but mugs. Let's say that during this week, you're going to sell each of your mugs for $10. And let's say during that first week, you sold eight mugs. How much money did you make? That's right, 80 bucks. And how'd you find that? You multiply the price of how much you sold them for by the quantity of how many you sold. This $80 that you brought in is your revenue for that week. In other words, you just derived the revenue formula, price times quantity. So it's pretty cool you made 80 bucks this week, right? Wrong. Wrong. I'm assuming it costs you a certain amount to make each mug. And let's say that cost was $4. It costs you $4 to make each mug, which means this is your variable cost. If this was only the cost per mug and you sold eight mugs, then how much did it cost you in total? That's right, it costs you $32. On top of that $32 for the mugs, the space that you rented out just to make the mugs charged you a fixed cost of $100. So how much did mug making this week cost you in total? That's right, 32 plus 100 is 132. But at least the good thing is you just derived the cost formula. The cost formula says that cost equals variable cost times quantity plus the fixed costs. So if you only made $80, but it cost you $132 to make $80, how much did you really make or lose? That's right, 80 minus 132 is negative 52. This week you lost $52 making some mugs. In other words, you have a profit of negative $52. So in reality, you have a loss of $52. But the nice thing is, you've just derived the profit formula. Profit equals revenue minus cost. So here's a question to think about. How many mugs would you have to sell to break even? In other words, pass from negative profit or a loss into the positive profit and actually start earning money off your mugs. If you want, pause the video and take a shot at this question. Here are the formulas and here's the information. Let's start by coming up with the revenue. The revenue is price times quantity. The price of each mug is 10. The quantity, we don't know. The quantity is what we're solving for because the question asks, how many mugs will it take to break even? So the expression 10Q is our revenue. Now for the cost, our variable cost is four. Again, we're solving for the quantity, so we don't know the quantity yet, and our fixed costs are $100, so we add those on to the end. And we're trying to find the quantity for which we break even. In other words, when the profit is equal to zero or when the profit passes from negative to positive. So what we want to do is set up a profit expression. Profit is revenue minus costs. It's very important to keep cost in parentheses because in most problems, what's going to happen is that this negative will distribute to both the cost terms. When we distribute and simplify, we get profit is equal to 6Q minus 100. So if we want to know where we break even, all we need to do is set this profit expression equal to zero and solve this for Q. Adding 100 to the other side and dividing by 6, we get approximately 16.7 mugs. An additional question to consider is this. What happens if we only sell 16 mugs? Will we still break even? Will we have a negative profit? Will we have a positive profit? Or will it take selling 17 mugs to actually pass that break even point and earn a profit? If you said 17, that is correct. We always wanna round up if they ask anything about when we break even, because it always takes selling and producing a whole number, and that is the next whole number up in order to earn a profit or break even completely. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to stay updated, connect with me, or connect with other students in your course, join the Discord. If you want to see these ideas applied to this week's practice problems, go ahead and click the link up here. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.